So this is Hake, it's a round whitefish, and we're gonna fillet it up today. I'm gonna to show you, um, not normally something you would get to fillet on a regular basis, because you buy it either filleted or staked from your fishmonger. Um, the difference with this white round fish is it has a big backbone going probably to around about there. So it has a big rib cage. So the same process as any other filleting for a round fish, but you're taking it off the bigger rib cage. Okay, so we're just gonna take our knife, nice sharp filleting knife, and we're going to go in just behind that gill there till we get to the backbone. So you can see the backbone here, go around onto onto the fillet there. So just run our knife. Nice sweeping, and as you can see there, yeah, there's the backbone. And it's, it's a lot bigger than you would normally get in a lot of round fish, okay? So just using our knife, just go all the way down. And doing this nice and slowly, just to so you can see how I'm taking it off. There, so you see it's taken off that rib bone, like so. A master fisherman would do this in seconds, okay? Just taking it off there, and you can see I'm taking it away from the bone. Now this is where I'm going to put my knife straight through, because there's no more there, and just take it off. There we are. So that's one fillet. We're going to tidy that up in a little minute. And we're going to do exactly the same on the other side. So that's the two fillets off the hake, as you can see. It's not an easy fish to fill it, and you probably wouldn't do that in the classroom as much. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is just clean this up. We're gonna take the belly fat out, just leave underneath there. Okay, so that's wastage. And just clean it up. Okay, so that's one side. So here we have the hake fillets off the bone, and what I'm gonna do is portion them up now. With hake, um, it's best to leave it with the skin on and cook it with the skin on, because if you skin it, it tends to fall a bit. After a while, the actual flesh will get a little bit softer. Okay, you can put a little bit of salt on there before you cook it to tighten the proteins up, but um, I tend to, either bake this or pan fry it really, really hot to tighten that protein up, okay? But you don't wanna really skin this straight away because as you can see, the flesh will, will fall to bits. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut some portions, okay? And that's one, nice little middle loin there and then I've got a tail piece there. Or you can <coughs> skin it and cut it into goujons, but I wouldn't cut, take the skin off or something like that. And also it's part of the presentation when you're cooking this type of fish, okay? We're gonna score that up, um, make sure it's really dry, and then you just put it into a hot pan to crisp the skin up. Or you put some olive, make sure it's really dry, put some olive oil on it, and put it into an oven at a high heat. So that's one portion, two, got a nice little tail portion there. And again, the same. I'll just tidy that bit up there, take the end off. Hake's really nice uh, as fish and chips as well. Or you could uh, breadcrumb it. 
even do a tempura batter. So we've portioned up uh, the hake here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six portions. So we took the fillets off the side, portioned them out, and we've got 140 gram portions. You should be eating two portions of fish a week. A portion is 140 grams. One of those portions should be oily fish. And so the hake there would be a really good second portion along with some uh, mackerel, some sardines, some tuna. I'm going to show you a really nice dish with hake now. It's going to marry up some haricot beans, okay, some tomatoes, some spinach. So we're going to get a really good protein hit, and we're going to get lots of fiber for the beans. Like we should be using a lot more of pulses in our diet. It's a really good source of protein. So we're going to start off this recipe by uh, popping our haricot beans into a pan that's been warming through. We don't want it too hot. We're going to put a little bit of olive oil in there, and we're going to gently warm that through. And then we're going to add some chili to it. Okay, so I've got a red chili here that I've chopped up really, really finely. I'll pop that in there. The big garlic. Okay, and leave that just to heat through really, really, really gently. If it's too hot, you can just pull it back until you get the right temperature. So the beans are heating through gently. I put the chili in there, a little bit of olive oil, some garlic. I'm now just going to drop some herbs in there. So I've got some lovely rosemary. Going to oh, really smells nice and fresh. It's going to add lots and lots of flavor to it. You can just roughly tear that into there or you can chop it up, depending on taste, really. I like it like so, but don't put in the stock. Put that to one side. Got some lovely thyme. Again, I'm just pulling the leaves off. You don't want the woody stalks. So in the pan, I've got my beans. I've got some olive oil, I've got some garlic, I've got some rosary, I've got some thyme. Final herb that I'm gonna put in there is some sage. So I'm just gonna take that out and I'm gonna roughly chop the sage. Use the stalks as well, because it's nice and soft. You know, don't want two large pieces. Okay, I'm gonna pop that into the pan there. Give a little shake. And I'm gonna put some small plum tomatoes in there just to stew, okay? And I'm just gonna let that sweat off on a really low heat. So that's sweating off on a low heat. I'm just gonna pop some lemon juice into there. That's fantastic. I'm just gonna let that cook away. While the um, bean, the haricot bean stew is actually cooking away, I'm going to start my hake. So I've got some lovely hake loin portions there, around about 140 grams, which is a portion. I'm going to get a nice hot pan. I've dried the skin off before I put it into the pan, so I'm going to get it nice and crispy. Then I'm going to put it onto a tray with a little bit of parchment on it, flesh side down into the oven, and that's going to cook for around about 10 minutes. The oven is on 180 degrees. So the hake's nice and dry. I'm just going to score that before we start to, to fry it. So I'm just going to put the green chopping board to one side, take the blue, and then just pinch it. And just one, two, three, I think four. All the way through, just through the skin, all the way through the flesh. Do that. My second one. So I'm going to pop that in the pan, uh, skin side down. I'm just going to hold it down. Again, have the students use a fish slice just to keep it nice and flat. So all the skin is in contact with the pan and that'll make it nice and crispy. That takes about a minute, minute and a half. Don't forget we've got the oven on, and that's 180. <clears throat> we're gonna, once that uh, skin is nice and crispy, we're gonna turn it over onto the plate, skins side up, and we're gonna have the flesh side down, and we're gonna cook that between five and six minutes in the oven, okay? Because we're giving it 
three minutes on this side, and then we're gonna pop it in the oven. Really, really high heat. So the fish should be opaque, yeah, and cooked all the way through. So you shouldn't be able to see any translucent flakes within the fish. So the hake is nice and crispy now. I'm gonna pop that onto my oven tray. Get it in there nice and hot. Okay, so now my, my beans are cooking away really nicely with the tomatoes there. The tomatoes are starting to break down a little bit, which is great. You can, if you want, use a normal tomato, you can blanch it and then just make a concast. So blanch it, five seconds in boiling hot water, plunge it into cold water, skin it, cut it in half, take the seeds out and do a rough chop uh, instead of plum if you want to do that, if you want to add another dimension to the dish. So I've got my beans in there, I've got my tomatoes cooking, all the herbs, I'm just going to pop in the spinach and that will wilt down normally. Okay, so that's my bean element all done. I'm just gonna leave that, just keep it nice and warm on the side and then I'm going to go and make my salsa verde to actually top the dish. So I'm gonna make my green sauce, the salsa uh, verde. I'm going to put some mint, some basil. It smells really nice and fragrant. We're just going to tear that into the food processor. Um, any really thick pieces of stock then take out because we don't want the woody bits in there. It's really easy to go, but this really complements the beans and the robustness of the hake. We're going to put another fish in there. And this is almost like a seasoning. It's quite uh, salty. It's an anchovy, okay? So it's preserved anchovy. We're going to pop that in there. We're going to add some capers and we're going to put in some Dijon mustard. A little bit of garlic into there and then some red wine vinegar. Now this is where you can adjust the consistency with the red wine vinegar and that gives you that tartness of, of, of taste. We also have some olive oil. So you're almost, you know, making a salad dressing with lots and lots of herbs on. That's basically what a salsa verde is. So I like it and you can add and adjust. There's no exact quantity. So you've got to feel this to the right consistency. Now I'm going to put my top on, make sure everything's well down. I don't want this all over the kitchen. And then to start with, I'm going to pulse. And then. So that's nice and pulse. I'm just gonna check the consistency. I'm gonna switch off the plug, take the plug out because we don't know if that uh, is faulty. So we turn that away so it can't start again. And then I'm just going to take the blade out, have a look at the consistency. Now I think that needs just a little bit more oil. So back in with the blade. <coughs> in with a little bit more oil. So now I'm just gonna taste it, take off the top. One side, just take the blade out of there. Yeah, I think that's just right. Just the right amount of saltiness, perhaps a little bit more vinegar in there, and I'll give that a mix up with a clean spoon. No need to pulse it anymore. I'm just going to mix that up with a spoon. Okay, so my salsa verde, or my green sauce is all ready to go. I'm just gonna clean up, I'll transfer this to the bowl and then we'll look at plating the dish because I think the hake is ready now.
So the hake has finished cooking in the oven. I've taken it out, it's just resting there. I've got two pieces there. I'm going to use one for this dish and I'll use the other one for something else. My stew is all finished here. So I've got my haricot beans, I've got my spinach that's wilted down there, my tomatoes, all the herbs, a little bit of olive oil, and that's all set to go. And then I've got my green sauce I'm going to use to just drizzle over the hake to add another a uh, citric element, um, almost um, a really nice complement to that strong hake taste. So we're going to start by replacing the haricot beans, the spinach, tomato, okay, onto our plate. Really good sauce of fibre. Haricot beans, what you find in a tin of beans with tomato sauce. That's what they use for the tins of beans with the tomato sauce. So I'm just going to <coughs> give that a little wipe so it's nice and clean. Pop that there. Okay, so we're going to take our fish. We're going to place that to one side like so. And Again, it's up to you guys how you want to present this. I'm just going to put a little bit of green sauce. So there we have a hake dish served with haricot beans and a salsa verde, a green sauce. The hake's been pan fried, popped in the oven for eight to 10 minutes. And um, we've got a really nice combination of ingredients there on the plate with the beans, the fish, and the piquant taste of that salsa verde really complements it all the way through.